So first of all, what the heck's the cloud? It may seem like a hazy concept, no pun intended, and it is confusing. Um, I wrote a blog post about this a week or so ago for Performance Architects. We've all had that moment where we're out with friends uh, at lunch or at a bar, and someone says to you, you know, my whatever application, whether it's banking or software, music or photos, are stored in the cloud. And oftentimes, you're kind of left wondering, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> where is it? Sitting up there with the angels, having them look at your data? I mean, it's just one of those things where you're like, where did that come from and what are you talking about and why do I care? So let's set the stage with just a definition here. Um, basically, the image of the cloud came from the earliest images of what the Internet was, data stored somewhere else, not on your local computer. That's all it means. Um, and it gets very confusing because it kind of gets extrapolated from the definition of Internet, and people just think it means some amorphous concept out there. So that's all it is. Um, however, it's also confused with some business software terms, and this is why people get really mixed up sometimes. There are three service offerings that compri comprise a business cloud service offering to be sort of distinguished from your consumer experience with applications you might have on your phone or over the internet that you use for your personal business. So this is really uh, the way businesses look at it. First of all, there's software as a service. And what that means is software that's deployed over the internet as a service, oftentimes in a pay-as-you-go model or a subscription model, and sometimes there's even no charge to it because there might be other revenue streams. Um, like advertisement or user list sales. So a consumer example of that might be like a Pandora or a Spotify where you're listening to music and um, you get it for free, but in exchange to listening to ads every few minutes. Um, so some of the work examples of that might be Salesforce or Workday or GoToMeeting, which we're on right now, really things you subscribe to. Then there's something called platform as a service. And platform as a service is really analogous to software as a service, except that Rather than being software delivered over the web, it's actually a platform for the creation of that software. It's what businesses use to create software for other businesses. And finally, there's infrastructure as a service. And what that is, is it's really all the infrastructure that underlies the software and the internet that makes these services available. So companies can choose to really lease space on this equipment to make their software and services available. Places like Amazon Web Services or Microsoft Azure are examples of that. And what makes it super confusing is when we talk about moving things to the cloud, oftentimes organizations are talking about all three of these things bundled. So sometimes it just doesn't make a lot of sense when you're talking about the cloud as to what you're talking about. So you might want to ask people to clarify when you talk about moving to the cloud and what that really means. So how does it impact you at a high level, no pun intended? Obviously, as a consumer, it's pretty obvious. You have these phones now that act like computers. Your computer doesn't store very much anymore. It's all on, on the Internet somewhere. Um, but you also have a lot of your office applications being stored other places. And that gives you a lot more flexibility. Um, also tethers you to the office uh, a lot more. Obviously, we've all had that experience of being at a kid's soccer game or on vacation. And having someone say to us, well, can't you just look at that document over your phone while you're sitting on the beach? So why is business software moving in this direction? Um, really, it's about reduced costs and remote access. Um, the software as a service model, because it's delivered as a service, allows costs to spread out over time, although the software vendors have gotten a lot smarter about this. They're asking for upfront payments. Uh, for these kinds of monthly payments as opposed to spreading them out over you know, months or years. But there is some reduced reduction in upfront cost. There's also a reduction in, in your actual IT cost as an organization. Um, you don't have to have somebody on site that maintains it in the same way. You don't have to maintain those physical computers or servers. And um, you don't have to deal with those upgrades. They're automatic, although there's kind of a downside to that as well. And again, it gets back to that remote access as the third benefit, which is Again, you don't need to be tied to a physical computer where the data is stored, so you can work as an end user almost anywhere, which again, has its pros and cons, to say the least. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, you can believe the data. Uh, here's some statistics about the shift. I mean, basically, this category is growing at a minimum 20% year over year, according to several research uh, houses. 
um, over 60% of software uh, enterprises are expected to have at least half of their infrastructure, excuse me, by 2018 on cloud-based platforms. And frankly, it's going to have trillions of dollars of economic impact. So the bus is kind of leaving the station. Whether or not you want to get on it is your choice. Um, but we as a consultancy who does a lot of work in this area have been very engaged in this for the last 24 months, and we don't see it slowing down anytime soon.